Please join me in thanking, in thanking Luca, welcoming Matthew Hodgson from Matrix. Hi everybody, um, I'm the odd one out in that um, I'm an open source, I'm not, I'm not personally an open source project, but I run an open source project, which is a non-profit entity. Uh, my day job's actually with Amdocs, but they've kindly sponsored me and my team to go off into the wilderness and build um, an open source project called Matrix, which is what I would like to talk to you about today. Um, I apologize, I'm gonna go quite fast because there's quite a lot of material here. Also, please feel free to interrupt at any point, although it will probably cause chaos, but uh, just yell if you have any questions. So the problem, or one of the problems we see is that WebRTC gives you no way to specify a specific signaling protocol. So if you're building a WebRTC application, there is no standard way to set up calls. We think this is a bit of an oversight. It makes interoperability hard, makes federation impossible, and it creates silos. Silos are bad. As a user, you end up in a mess like this. If Bob wants to talk to Alice, he has to navigate this twisty, twisty maze of paths, all alike, um, between all of these different applications. And with WebRTC, we've not just got what, six over the tops, we're talking hundreds of over the tops. They've got different ID models, and some people might say, hey, this is flexibility, this is choice. I can pick the best application for me. But it's not true. It's a fragmented mess. You have to find a common application with somebody else you can't actually converge. You have to keep installing all of these apps. You end up with 30 identical apps doing precisely the same thing on your phone. And it's like some crazy world where if I was on email, I had to go and register with Gmail just to send somebody an email on Gmail. Because they're all doing the same thing at a lowest common denominator. And there is no good way to defragment them currently. So, I obviously want to use the preferred app and services that I want. I don't want to be forced into it by my contacts. And if email lets me do this, why on earth doesn't work in instant messaging? Now, obviously, there are attempts to do this in the past, and the current signaling protocols we have are good old SIP, um, good old XMPP. You can do some slightly more exotic stuff with a WebRTC data channel like OpenPeer from the guys at HurtFlash, or you can do one of many different HTTP APIs to go and set up these calls. And, um, well, SIP, it's pretty heavyweight. It's quite complicated. There's been a lot of time spent filling in the bad bits of SIPO for the last 15, 16 years. And in the end, it's not that different to HTTP for signaling. So if you've got a web browser and you're setting up a WebRTC call, why would you go and embed another signaling stack inside your browser when you already have a perfectly good way of doing RPC calls and method invocations over HTTP? Then you've got XMPP and um, Jingle. Now, XMPP has been around, I guess, for about, again, 14 years, um, now 15 years, I think. It's got some quirks. Um, it's still relatively complicated. It's got some interesting um, ideas, like the baseline being obviously extensible, which is great in terms of being able to build lots of extensions. But if the lowest common denominator is too um, feature anemic, that can lead to fragmentation, be a bit of a problem. Jingle itself has not had a huge amount of uptake, and yet again, it's a custom stack that you have to embed either in your browser or somewhere between your browser and the network in order to actually talk XMPP. Um, I should mention that for the last 10 years, we've been building commercial SIP and XMPP um, solutions, so this isn't a case of newbies coming on the scene and saying, oh, the web's amazing, let's do everything with HTTP, but it is hopefully vaguely well um, informed. Then you've got HTTP. It's um, simple, but comically fragmented because everybody says, hey, it's so simple, I'm going to invent my own signaling protocol with my own type of JSON in order to set up a call or send a message. Um, a bunch of them are proprietary, and many of them are closed, like Firebase, Pusher, PubNub, and all these other um, pushers of service things. So our solution, our proposal, is Matrix. So Matrix is open source. It's Apache licensed, and we launched about seven weeks ago, so it's comically early days for us. Um, we're a US 501C, or will be shortly once the lawyers are finished with it. Matrix.org is where we live. Um, and it's a very pragmatic, simple HTTP API standard for federated messaging of any flavor. So that could be sending an instant message, it could be setting up a WebRTC call, it could be any kind of JSON sending from um, a client to another client. But the key thing is that it's federated. It's an open federation. So I can run my metric server, you can run your metric server, and 
if I send a message to you, it will go to my server, my server will hand it over to yours and down again. It's just like email. So we define the client server and the server, server API and we'll have server application and server APIs coming shortly. Um, we're also providing open source reference implementations of all of this. So we've got a Python server written in Twisted. Um, some crazy guy went and wrote uh, his own server in Golang, which was kind of fun because it shows that our spec um, is usable. And lots of clients, um, Angular, JavaScript, iOS, Android, Python, Perl, um, you name it, we're adding in as many clients as we can. Who are we? Well, I'm Matthew, and I run Matrix with a lady called Amandine, and we've got a bunch of developers who, as I mentioned, Amdox is kindly sponsoring to work on this. And it basically comes from the realization that VoIP and instant messaging fragmentation is really holding back the whole industry, and we didn't want to be part of the problem anymore, but actually put a solution out there. So, what is our mantra? Uh, our characteristics are completely open. So open standard, open source, open project, open federation. Message history is a first class citizen. This is something that loads of people have got wrong over the years. Nowadays, it's table stakes. You have multiple devices, you want your history to be in sync on both of them. Both of them. Group communication, again, first class. One-to-one -one chat is just a subset of group chat. You want to have strong crypto to prove everybody's identities and to prevent tampering um, with your distributed message history. You want to be identity agnostic. We don't want to add yet another Jabber ID or Skype ID into the mix. And we want to provide end-to-end -end encryption, which hasn't landed yet, but will do re real soon now. Um, I would show you a demo, but we don't have time. The architecture, well, looks a bit like that. You've got a bunch of servers talking to one another out there on the internet, just like email servers. Each server has a bunch of clients off it. We also have identity servers, which are a separate clique, which map your phone number and your email address through to your internal matrix ID. I would also show you another demo, but I don't have time. So the actual client server API um, is a typical RESTful thing to go and send a message. I put or post some JSON here saying hello of type message to a URL that looks like that, underscore matrix, client API version one rooms, the name of the room, the fact you're sending, and the type of the thing you're sending, and an access token. And you get back an event ID. If you were setting up a WebRTC call, again, it's just a one line um, thing to go and push some JSON containing the SDP of that call to a URL, and any kind of JSON goes into Matrix. So you can set up a WebRTC call like that. You can do crazier things. You can put MIDI in there. So this is a hack that we did at TechCrunch a few weeks ago. Um, thought it would be fun to put network MIDI, which is the digital music um, format, um, into Matrix, uh, which we did, which was kind of fun. Um, and we also did another ha hack where we went and put a 3D avatar into Matrix because, hey, it's Matrix, and what's more fun than putting 3D guys waving and running around the place into Matrix? Um, server server API is more complicated. I'm not going to go through that whole thing, but the interesting things to look at are the fact we've got some SHA hashes uh, which allow us to redact content, and we're signing the whole thing with an elliptic um, curve um, hash which is kind of cool because it means that we distribute state over all of the servers who participate in Matrix. So there is no single point of control over any communication. There is no chat server, there is no mobile network, there's no any single place where a conversation exists. If I have my Matrix server and I kill it, it will go and resynchronize in everything from other servers in Matrix. So it's kind of self-healing, eventually consistent system, and we use a blockchain-style cryptographic um, technique to get um, a secure um, history for that. Um, what about Internet of Things? Well, I'm glad you asked, because nobody else is talking about it today. Um, Internet of Things protocols, I won't go through the details, but we've got CoAP, which is basically REST over UDP, sort of, and we've got MQTT, which is basically PubSub over TCP, sort of. Both are very different. Both of them provide low bandwidth ways to send messages between devices. None of them provide a global federated approach. None of them have history. None of them have signing. None of them have end-to-end -end crypto. We hope that as well as solving the missing signaling protocol for WebRTC, Matrix will help things there. And here's an example of exposing Matrix via co-app, which is that lovely Perl one-liner. Um, so basically, any uh, Internet of Things device can persist data into Matrix, and it can add on data pushed out of Matrix, and likewise for MQTT. Current progress is uh, we got funded to do this in May. We launched in September. We landed our mobile stuff in October. Coming up next is finalizing the spec, because we've published all of Matrix as an open standard. 
Um, we've got to complete the federation implementation, but I'm glad to say that that actually landed yesterday, so we can check that off the list. Uh, we need to declare the whole thing production ready. I go into beta because at the moment we're in alpha. That will probably happen at the end of this week, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff there too. Um, you can get involved. Please run a server. Go and grab it from matrix.org. It's um, all on GitHub. If you can run Python, then run a server. Build something on top. Build gateways, build XMPP gateways, SIP gateways, whatever gateway you like, and help us create this brave new world of a kind of thing that looks a bit like a PSTN but lives on the internet um, real soon now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I, want, I want to say the, the challenge also with demos in this room question. I have a question. Sorry, oh, sorry, Andy, go for it. I would, to get it up and running without federation should be about five minutes. Okay. <laughs> I hope that you're on, uh, wind uh, you're not on Windows and that you've got a, uh, a suitable Unix box running Python somewhere there. I have a few VMs that might be able to Okay, and that sounds very good. Um, yeah, it should be about five minutes. To expose it to federation, you have to set up DNS, um, which is obviously a bit more faffy, but fairly straightforward. Thanks. Thanks.